I'm Julianne Hartman, and welcome to Heart to Heart. Now, today I have a very special guest on the show, so get ready when I tell you what the title is. Our title is Porn to Praise. Yes, you heard it. I said porn. And this gentleman I met, I, I heard his testimony, and it was like, wow, I got to have him on the show. This is Wayne C. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for me. having me. Um, this is definitely something that, you know, is going to get a lot of hits, I'm sure, <laughs> when you see, when you hear the I love word it. porn. Love but um, And this is a vehicle now which you can take and bring people to the Lord, and that's awesome. Yes. So I want to get right into this because we don't have a lot of time, and I've got lots of questions. So Wayne, like, how did you get involved? When did it start? How old were you? And how did this whole thing happen? How did I get involved in porn? Yes, get oh, involved okay. in porn. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm involved in so many things. I'm like, what is she talking about this time? <laughs> All right. Um, well, actually, yeah, it was, uh, it was a very strange situation. I've been an entertainer my whole life. Uh, musician, singer, actor, mostly uh, radio host and, and uh, TV host, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I've done a bunch of stuff, even voiceover stuff. You've seen me or heard me in Transformers. I was one of the Transformers on a hit TV show on Fox. I was proud, proud, transform. That was me. Um, anyway, so everything was going great. My, my career was starting to, to bud and bloom. And, um, and uh, there was like a, a little lull in it, but uh, things were still fine. And, and somebody at random just said, how would you like to do a... A naughty radio show. Uh, I bought this dirty URL, uh, mm. and I'm not gonna say it. Right. Um, but uh, how would you like to do a show on there? And I said, I don't know, man. He said, Well, you have porn stars as co-hosts, and uh, you know, I was a single guy. Right. First kind of thought, I was like, Hey, porn stars and radio. I can, right. you know, maybe that's fun. Um, and uh, a guy's dream. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and um, and what happened was, is uh, I, it, within a short time, it became ridiculously popular. Um, and so this little temporary stop into the, the blue world mm-hmm. turned into a career. I mean, I started to become, my best friends were some of the biggest porn stars of today, Ron Jeremy, Jenna Jameson, Tara Patrick. We were, we were buds. We were hanging out. We were doing our thing. They were making movies. I was a, I was a porn personality. It was like a, a new thing that they came up with, oh, okay. kind of based on my role in the community. I was a porn personality. The problem was, is then as that started going, see, this is the thing you don't realize about adult films, whether you're in it or even when you're viewing it, is it starts with a, ooh, that's dirty kind of feel, Mm -hmm. and you don't even see yourself going lower and lower and lower. It just starts Mm -hmm. coming up on you, and you don't even realize it. And what started to happen was, is instead of kind of being on the outside of the community, I started becoming inside the community, meaning I started participating in some of the parties. Oh, right. Some of the parties that, I I didn't get into the drug scene at first. Um, but just into the promiscuous stuff, into, okay. um, you know, you were the big star, so all the girls want to, you know, play with you, and da da da. And then next thing you know, I started really getting far deeper and deeper in- into it. And um, what had happened was, is probably, you know, five, six, seven years into it, uh, I was in a really, really bad place and didn't know it. I was still acting like I was on top of the world, but yeah, I was, I was hurting, hurting. You, you start to, um, it, I don't care how much you justify what you do in that business because right. that's what we do. You talk to any porn star on the street, she'll tell you that she um, she's completely in control of it. She she loves sex. That's why she does it. And she's you know all these different whatever excuses they need to make to make mm-hmm. themselves feel better. But they are hurting inside big time. And that's what was happening to me. Uh, I started to become a, uh, so popular. I, I bought my own movie company with a girlfriend, a porn star girlfriend of mine, and we were going to have our own. We started making our own adult films. Uh, I was appearing in these films. Um, I started doing drugs. Mm. I spent my whole life. I said no to drugs. My entire life. Oh my At gosh. 35 years old, I started doing drugs. <laughs> oh my it made no sense. It was like, yeah. um, but you just start going lower and lower and lower, and then at, at some point, there's really no boundaries left. Right. Uh, so that's that's the gist of it. That's how I got into the into that crazy. So let world. me ask you a question now. When you were like, well, first of all, what's your family think? Did anybody know? Oh man, my poor mom. I mean, I was I was raised. She's a Christian mother, but um, it was it was Episcopal. Which is kind of like Catholic without the Pope, and uh, so so <laughs> it was funny. like by by high school I ran from that whole scene because mm-hmm. it was just I never felt welcome there. It was always a sorry a bunch of blue hairs, and um, you know I'm talking you know right, what I mean by yeah. that, and um, and it, it just it was always boring. And mm-hmm. the sermon was and then John said you know like it was right. not fun. So um, I was like we're here to celebrate God. This is celebrating. I, I didn't like it. So that's when it really that's when it all started the wrong way um anyway long story short my mom god bless her she um she would send me little notes once in a while i get a letter in the mail dear wayne you were not born for porn love mom you know <laughs> little things like that um and uh, you know no, nobody was happy about it nobody was but you know i was an adult i was living right, my life right. you know there's not too much they could do but they still love me they're still great of people course, um, of they course. just were 
praying like crazy. <laughs> now, while you were in this, though, I mean, were there a time where you were going, I cannot do this. Why am I doing this? What was I thinking? Or were um, you just so full of yourself and so full of the whole... I got cocky because I got, I got popular fast, and I think that's why a lot of porn stars do it, too. A lot of people can't make it in Hollywood. And um, not that they can't make it in Hollywood, but they're struggling and struggling. And, and um, porn's an instant success, and you get instant fans for doing, you know, you got to really belittle yourself, but you are getting a quick audience, whereas opposed to building a Hollywood career is a lot of mm -hmm. effort. So I think that went to my head a little bit, too, because I became uh, everywhere I was. Hey, there he is, that crazy guy, you know, and um, yeah, so... Um, I forget the actual question, but I was answering. No, did, did you ever feel like you wanted to? Oh, like, yeah, you like, know, what I, am I doing? I didn't, I didn't feel like that up until the end. I don't know why. I think, I think you really get into a place where you can continue to convince yourself that you're doing what you want to do. Well, and, I think that that's in anything though. When we're doing something that you know is not right, or yeah. you have to, you have to. I think that's like a self, like some kind of mechanism that when you yeah. have inside, we go, "This is okay." Until somebody sheds a light on it, and then all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute, that yeah. isn't okay. No, absolutely. You know, uh, they, they, uh, God put it in us that we know what's right and wrong right from the start, exactly. even if we take the complete opposite road. Um, but I guess there comes a point, like right now I'm so plugged in, when, when I'm off, the Holy Spirit punches me in the gut. Uh, not literally, but you know, like I get right. that feeling. And, and I think when you're in that place where I was at that time, you're so far away from that conviction that you just don't even notice anymore. You just continue to keep moving forward until you go face down into that dirty puddle. And that's okay, so what now, happened to me. Uh, how did you, now, so there's, you know, we have the old renewing of the mind. So you were already saved, though. No. Oh, mm -mm. So you were I grew up saved. in an Episcopal family. It was a religious family. Okay, so, I so see it was what you're a, saying. A, I'm the one that led my mom to the Lord. So, okay. you know, now, lately. So okay. it was so not then, that. So there was the getting saved and the renewing of the mind, which we all have to do anyway. But so how was that process? I mean, how did you just walk away one day and not look back? Well, it's, um, I, was, I was at the end of my, before I found Jesus, uh, or before he found me, um, I was at that place where um, it was all starting to come apart inside me. Like, my, my whole world was just, I felt, I felt, I just felt like there was nothing but pain mm -hmm. inside and out. I felt, I, I really believe that if, if Jesus didn't rescue me, I would have been, I'd be dead right now. Now, you know? when you say pain, what does that mean? Were you having like I think No, I, I was having physical pains, but like... I was also having emotional, uh, just emo emotional overload. Um, the best way I can describe it is, is um, if you could take, you know, you know how Jesus took all our pain on the cross? Yes. I'm not even going to compare to that, right. to that situation. But I, I think, I think that my body and my, my inside, my soul, my whole thing was starting to experience all my own mm. transgressions and pains and, and choices and everything from over the years that, that really, you know, hurt myself and, and, the, and the loved ones around me. I think it was all coming on me, uh, which I, which I believe is great because I believe that's what got me to reach out. Right. Um, real quick. I was at a, a porn convention. They have these porn conventions every year in Las Vegas. They're, they're like the Academy Awards of porn. Mm -hmm. They're just huge. And I, being in the media, I was always covering these events on the red carpet and whatever. Uh, and this last year, I was so hurt by what I was seeing, and, and I didn't want to be there anymore. And I'm seeing these girls just coming out of high school, um, mm -hmm. and they're walking down the halls. And they just came out of a gangbang, you know, like with the high school girls that just came out with multiple partners, and they're bragging oh about God. it. Oh, I just did it. And, oh, my God. And it was... Here I am, 38 years old or whatever, 39 years old, and I'm looking at these girls and going, "Wow, that little she looked like a little girl to me. She just looked like she she didn't look like a, an adult, you know." Yeah. And she's bragging about the most horrendous things that she just did. It made me sick, and it and it, and it nudged me and said, "I want to get back to that church." And it's a church that I went to one time with a porn star. It's called In His Presence, which you go there. Right. Um, and uh, all I could think of when I was up there in that filth was, I got to get back to that church. I got to get back to that church. Wow. So I actually left early. I didn't catch, I didn't cover the award show. I, I got in my car, drove home, uh, and went right to that church, and I, I never left since. So <laughs> now, tell what happened that day at that church. Was that was it the first time that you went that you... No, uh, I had that experience. Yeah. No, see, um, I was eating it in. And every week, I believe I was saved th that first day because the first day I went, you know, at the end of every service they do an altar call like many of the Christian churches, and uh, and I would sit in the back and I would I put my arms up and I would say the prayer and and I believe that, you know, I was saved then, but I never went to the altar. Five months go by, and the reason was is I thought I was too dirty because I was still working in the industry, so I thought I can't go to the altar. I'm, you know, I, I'm going to go to Jesus right. when I'm all clean. You know, because that's right. what a lot of people think. You have to be all cleaned up to see Jesus, not realizing He wants you the way you are, so He can clean you up. Right. <laughs> um, right. So uh, for five months, I sat there every week, and then finally, 
even though I was there, I was in the game, I was believing, uh, I, I, I sat there and, and said, I said, Jesus, if you're real, this is, you know, four or five months in where I really felt it, but if you're really who they say you are, I said, um, you know, prove it and I'll serve you till the day I die. Uh, and then, and then he proved it. Now, do I have time to tell you how he proved it? Yeah, really quick. Cause I know we got about, about three minutes left, but I got more questions so go on. Okay. All right. Well, real quick, long story short, um, that, that that whole next week, I had the six. You know, I was telling you I was in pain. I, this pain continued throughout the thing. It was it was I was enjoying what I was, was experiencing in church, but I still had this body pain. Okay. It got to a point where I couldn't move. I had to go to the hospital. It was I, I thought I was dying of a heart attack, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll get through it quick. But it turns out there was nothing wrong with me. Absolutely zero things wrong with me. Yet I was in this, this excruciating pain. Couldn't move. So I went to church in this pain, and, and in the middle of the service, the the pastor's wife gets up out of nowhere and says. Hey, I feel like there's someone here in pain. Can I pray for you? Is anybody in pain? And I thought that was weird because it was in the middle of his service. The, right. the father, you know, the the shepherd, main shepherd of our church. You don't interrupt like that. And uh, so I got up, and a few other people got up. And uh, but as she was praying, my whole body got locked. I mean, like I couldn't move. And this is not some crazy story. I, I used to watch like shows where I'd be like, okay, buddy. <laughs> uh, I couldn't. I was locked. I was trying to tell my friend that was with me, like like what was going on, but I was completely locked. And as she's praying. This warm, oozing, loving, complete um, blanket of, I can't even describe it, it's like an interior hug comes over my body. And, and it felt great. And then as soon as she was done praying, it was, it was released. And then all my pain was gone. Every single wow. thing that I was in pain, I was like, I can go play a football game. Now, now I remember I had nothing wrong with me. I just got back from the hospital. There was yeah. nothing wrong with me. But I feel like God was saying, hey, listen, you know, you've been through a lot, but now you've been washed clean by my blood. Yeah. And so let's start over. Let's do what I had planned for you. And uh, I, I can tell you, every time I tell the story, I, can't even, I can never tell the story without losing it. That's because so it was awesome. unbelievable. Unbelievable. So now, Wayne, let me ask you a question. If you were, do you minister to people now in the pornography yes. industry? Yes. All we've the We've had time. 35 uh, porn stars at our church. 12 of them have been to the altar. Um, about six of them uh, never went back to porn. They stayed, they stayed in, in, on the Christian walk. Uh, and then, uh, and pfft, I, I, I minister like crazy to them on the side as well, you know, right. on the phone and events and different mm-hmm. things. And now, so let me ask you a question. If there's somebody out there that, you know, we, we, we broadcast to all over the world that you can, you know, minister to just on the camera about, you know, maybe they're, maybe they are hooked on pornography, like they're watching it and they're married or what, you know, they're just yeah. hooked on it or they're, you know, cause it's all the internet now. Um, you know, what would you say to them? And also what would you say to people that are in the business? Well, the biggest thing I would say to generically anybody who knows they're not right with God right now, and that's, that's, that's all of us at some time in our life, um, he's real. <laughs> Jesus is real. When I found out he was real, that's when I said it. I'm not going back. My friends say to me all the time, like, how could you give it all up? How do you, how'd you get celibate? How do you stop drinking? How do you stop smoking after 25 years? How do you just like that? You just went like a, I found out he was real. Like, I told him to prove it, and he did. And, and not only did he prove it, but he rocked my world, and now he continues to. And you'll never know until you do it. The Bible talks about how, how Christianity and Jesus, is, it's, it's spiritually discerned, which means that I can tell you all day long it's real, but until you step in and press in, you'll never know what I'm talking about. To you, it'll still be a fairy tale. But once you sit, you, between you and God, you close your eyes and you say, Jesus, come to me, talk to me. I want to know you. When you do that, he will do that. If you seek him, he will seek you. You get closer to him, he'll get closer to you. It's real. All that stuff, I used to think, oh, the Bible used to be an ashtray holder and a beer holder for me at the hotel. That's what a Bible was. It was a book that I didn't care about. I threw it around the room. I could care less. Now I realize that it's the living word of God. And I know it not because I'm not, I'm not some Christian that's been doing this since I was three years old. And I'm going to tell you, be good. And I, I've never walked the walk. I've been the worst of the worst. Right. And I'm telling you, he loves you right now where you are. So that's the, that's the quick generic version. If you're in pornography, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's the message. If you're addicted to pornography, here's another message I want you to, to, to know is, what you're doing, it's fine. It's a selfish thing that you're doing. You're, 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 and I'm not putting you down because I've been there. You're looking at a situation and you're using it as a momentary gratification. But what you don't realize is, is you're not just sat, doing something to yourself. You're doing something to that girl. That, that girl is someone's daughter, someone's wife, someone's mother, whoever it is. And what happens is by you supporting her, you're keeping her at it. You're keeping her going. You're supporting her de- degradation of, of herself. And now that might not bother you, but if it does, then you definitely need God. <laughs> because that was, if you get the reality of the fact that, look at your sister, look at your mother. Those are who you're, these or your are the, daughter. Who, you're your daughter. Those are people that are in the porn business. Now you might say, oh, that never happened to my sister. Do you know how many wives in the porn business secretly shoot porn behind their husband's back? 
It happens all the time. And I'm not saying that that's your wife. I'm just saying right. is it's somebody that you know. And if it isn't, it's somebody somebody else loves. So if you look at it that way, it might skew you a little bit more. Well, than thank the... you. And I, and that, that I know bless a lot of people. I just want to read this really quick that how, how big this industry is. It, it's uh, Pornography Industries has the largest revenues more than Microsoft, Google, Amazon, eBay, Yahoo, Apple, and Netflix combined. Yep. That's amazing. And that's, but we're contributing to, well, not me and you, but, you know, us as a society is contributing to that. Yep. Well, we have to go, unfortunately. We've uh, wrapped it up, but our, our foundation scripture for today is Psalm 125 3. And uh, if you would like to say that, I, I love that scripture. It's, um, it just, it, 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 I always think about the, the, the lands I used to walk on and the, and the grounds I used to walk on when I did my dirty deeds. Uh, and this scripture always kind of sets me straight, and that's the scepter of the wicked does not rest on the land allotted for the righteous. And uh, say it out loud a couple of times and it'll sink in. It's kind of deep. Yes, definitely. Deep. Well, again, thank you so much. Yeah, and anytime. Uh, I got a million more things to say. I'm so, sure you know, we you can come do. back and do five episodes if you want. <laughs> well, thank you. From my heart to yours, this is Julianne Hartman and Wayne C. And we will see you soon.